When I go on a cruise, there's lots of things that I love to do on there, including a lot of things that I would never do back at home. I've got a list of those up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and if you've ever been on a cruise, you might have noticed there are a few things that we tend to do on a cruise ship that we might not do back at home. Going on a cruise vacation means that you have a wealth of choices and activities, dining, and things to do all around. It's not just an opportunity to, quote unquote, get away from it all, but also explore and indulge. And along those lines, I find that there are definitely some things that I do on a cruise somewhat regularly that I probably wouldn't do back at home. Part of it is, I think, maybe being in a vacation mindset or simply wanting to enjoy my vacation by splurging or putting myself out there. So today, I wanted to share the top things that I do on a cruise ship, but probably not back at home. Let's start with number one, and that is gamble in the casino. On a cruise, I don't know, just because it's there, I tend to go to the casino a couple times during the sailing. My wife prefers I probably don't go at all, but I like it. It's kind of fun and enjoyable, you know, before or after dinner, or both, to go down there, put some money on black, see if even can hit, and uh, double down on aces. I think you're supposed to do that, or split aces, whatever the case may be. I like going down to the casino, and, you know, it's fun to throw some money around. Maybe you win, maybe you don't. Boy, it's a great feeling if you actually do win. But that's what it is. It's a bit of an enjoyment activity. I don't go down there and put my whole life savings out there, but it's nice to kind of spend some money on the casino and see if it works out. But back at home, I just would never go to a casino on land. I don't say never, but I certainly don't go with any kind of regularity once in a blue moon. But when I'm on a cruise ship, like I said, a couple times, I'm definitely down there. Something else I would do on a cruise ship that I tend not to do at home is really strike up a conversation with strangers. I think there's something about just being on a cruise ship and everybody kind of being collectively together there that it feels a little more inviting to start talking to somebody who's sitting next to you that you don't know. Now, again, it's not to say that I'm a hermit back at home, although sometimes it feels that way. But when I'm on a cruise ship, it's nice being able to be at a bar or on a shore excursion or wherever and... You know, someone sitting next to you and you might just say hello and or you're in the elevator and you start talking about what's happening there. It's something about a cruise that just doesn't happen like that back at home. I feel like when you're at home, everyone's in their routine. People are getting from A to B. They're going to work. They're going home. They're commuting. They're shopping. You don't like really stop people in the supermarket and be like, hey, how about that? I don't know, sports team or how about what's going on there out there today? You don't really do that. You just kind of on your way, move in, move in. You may say hello or a little smile or excuse me, but. But on a cruise ship, it's a much more open environment. I feel like it's more inviting, even for folks who might not be inclined to be social butterflies. It's just a little more open natured. So striking a conversation with strangers on a cruise ship is much more normal. Next up is something that I absolutely love, probably what hooked me on cruising to begin with, and that is order foods new to me. When I'm on a cruise ship, we go to the main dining room or we go to a specialty restaurant or anywhere else. I love trying new foods. There's a lot of great variety of food on Royal Caribbean, something that I actually think they do extremely well, especially in their buffets and in the main dining room as well. But having a choice of traditional foods as well as international foods or just foods I haven't tried before. And what's great is when you go to a restaurant on Royal Caribbean, generally speaking, nearly all the food there is included in when you're dining experience. So you can order as much as you want. And that's actually something that a lot of people kind of like are surprised by, especially first time cruisers that if you're in the main dining room, you can order and probably should order actually more than just an entree and an appetizer. You can order a ton of stuff. In fact, when we're at a land restaurant, I rarely ever order an appetizer. Maybe you'll be like, Ooh, my wife and I will share an appetizer. We're really going out there, right? Dessert. What am I made of money? Right. But on a cruise ship, no order appetizers, order dessert. No problem. And one of my favorite foods that I would definitely order on a Royal Caribbean ship, but never at home is escargot. If you're not aware, escargot is a, French delicacy of baked snails. It's on the Royal Caribbean menu. It's been the staple of the Royal Caribbean menu in the main dining room for dinner for a number of years, and you got to try it. I'm just telling you, you got to try it, but I would never, ever, ever order it at home. It's just one of those things, being on a cruise ship, YOLO, or I guess YOLO eat it, right? Next up is seeing an ice show. Count this among the many things I've done on a cruise that if you were to say, Matt, you want to go see an ice show at home, I would give you the weirdest look like, huh? Are you nuts? On Royal Caribbean, they have amazing ice shows in Studio B. Every ship that has a Studio B has a different ice show, and it's a really cool thing to see, and I really enjoy seeing them. But at home, Ice Capades, Disney on Ice, 
Heck no. You couldn't drag me to those things. But on a cruise ship, when we go on a, any cruise that has one, we definitely make a, a point to seeing one of those shows in Studio B because it's really, really good. The next thing that I do on a cruise that I don't do at home rarely if ever, and maybe I think there's some people who are going to agree with me on this one, is drink coffee past 6 p.m. You know, when we're at home, I have my morning coffee. I might have an afternoon coffee. But as an adult, especially as you start getting older, if you drink coffee past like, I don't know, three or four o'clock, you're really playing with fire, right? In terms of being up a little too late. But on a cruise, that's actually an advantage. And when we're on a cruise and we have dinner, whether it is first or second seating dinner, I will have coffee after my meal. So we're talking about having coffee at, you know, seven or nine o'clock PM, which is like, what? Right? At home, I would never do that. It'd be up until midnight. But on a cruise, that's actually advantageous because I sometimes need that little pick me up because there's so many fun things happening on board the ship, whether there's shows or activities or hanging out with friends, I need that little caffeine pickup. So having coffee on a cruise in the evening or plain old at night, I would do that on the cruise, never at home. Speaking of activities and things to do, seeing a Broadway show is something I definitely would do on a cruise ship that I rarely do at home. Now, my wife is a big Broadway fan, and she will oftentimes go to see a couple of shows when there's a show in town or whatnot, but seeing a Broadway show is something that we kind of do as a, as, as a special activity. Certainly, if we were visiting New York, we'll go there as well. And of course, Royal Caribbean has Broadway shows and also some great evening entertainment on all the ships throughout the cruise. And that's a really cool thing to do and something that we would definitely see on a ship nearly every night, but at home, it's very rare that we would do that or seek that out. It's just part of it is because number one, it's included with your cruise fare. That goes back to the amazing value of a cruise that you can go on a ship and see grease or hairspray or Mamma Mia, and it is included. No extra cost to see those shows. That's amazing considering how much those same shows would cost back at home. Since I mentioned that my wife likes those Broadway shows, here's something else that my wife would do on a cruise that she doesn't do at home, even though I tell her to do it anyway, and that is get a massage, go to the spa. You know, again, maybe it's just like the casino thing. There's something about being on a cruise and having access to the spa that makes it a little more inviting than it is at home. I think part of it is goes back to that idea of being having a vacation mindset. You're on vacation, you're there to enjoy yourself, and going to the spa is definitely something that I think my wife really does, and it's almost become a vacation tradition that, you know, there's many things we all look forward to, and going to the spa is one of those, getting a nice, relaxing massage that, as one of the spa masseuses once told us, makes you feel like mashed potatoes, <laughs> which I think is a very appropriate way to describe it. That's what it's all about, is relaxing and enjoying yourself. So getting a massage at the spa is definitely something on our list. Now, next up is something that I definitely tend to do on a cruise ship that I definitely would not do back at home, and that's be a little silly, right? Volunteering for a game show, the belly flop competition, there's ample opportunities to put yourself out there. There's a lot of friends of mine who've gone on cruises, and they're usually reserved folks. Maybe they have you know jobs of which back at home they're required to be very upfront and, and stern even, but on a cruise ship, you can really let go because in a lot of cases, you're never going to see these people again. And it's kind of fun to do something a little silly and join in the battle of the sexes game or go again on the belly flop competition and, you know, world sexiest man. I mean, there's lots of these other kind of things you can do on there. And it's an opportunity, whether you want to watch or participate up to you, but being silly on a cruise is something that's a lot of fun. Something else that I love doing on a cruise that I wouldn't do at home are the activities included with my cruise. Yes, I get it. They're Obviously, if they're included on the cruise, they wouldn't be include, offered back at home. But what I'm talking about is certain activities that are only signature activities found on a cruise that also I could do at home. As an example, ripcord by iFly, mini golf, bumper cars, escape rooms. These are all things that are part of a cruise experience that I can largely do back at home as well. I don't want to do them back at home. It's one of those things. Actually, if we were to drive by or someone were to suggest, hey, Matt, do you want to go do bumper cars? I'd be like, eh, no, because I can go do it on my cruise. I'm going on Anthem of the Season a little bit, and we'll go do it over there. It's Part of it is mindset. Part of it is being cheap. I freely admit that, that sometimes if I know bumper cars or mini golf are included in my cruise, why would I pay extra to go do it here in Florida? You know, th that, that's part of that as well. But there's something fun about being able to do those activities on a cruise, and it's just, again, I kind of gravitate towards doing those things on a cruise, but not back at home. And the last thing that I would definitely do on a cruise, I would never do at home, uh, and it's actually a very liberating experience, and that is walk around without my wallet. I, maybe this is a guy thing. Maybe for, I think for ladies as well, instead of wallet, maybe without your purse. 
one of the things I love, it's a very cathartic experience for me. You get on the cruise ship, you get in your room, I put my wallet, my keys, and all that junk in my safe. I lock it up, and all I have in my pocket, well, it's my phone because I'm still a nerd, but the <laughs> my CPAS card, no wallet. I sit down at chairs, and it's even. It's amazing feeling, very liberating. So walking around on my wallet, it takes a couple days, though, to get used to it, but my goodness, I love that. So there you go. There's the top 10 things that I do on a cruise that I would never do at home. I'd love to know in the comments, which of these do you agree with? And are there some that didn't make my list that you think should have been here? Let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, because it really does help us with YouTube's algorithm. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that way you don't miss out on these awesome videos and turn on your notifications. So that way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.